602, we turn back to the Middle East and Israeli forces really ramping up their attacks on Hamas. We're also seeing more signs that the country could be ever closer to that ground invasion. More than 300,000 Israeli troops have been called up and moved closer to the border, but the Biden administration is requesting that Israel delay any ground strike. The U.S. wants more time to get hostages to safety and humanitarian aid to Gaza. And speaking of that aid, more trucks carrying supplies have arrived in Gaza from Egypt. Those trucks include food, water, and medical supplies. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger has been in Israel for the past week covering this crisis in the Middle East. He's been all over. He joins us live now from the city of Naharia with the very latest. Josh. Charlene and Mike, uh, good morning. It's good afternoon. It's now one in the afternoon here in Israel. I am in Nahria, which is as far north as you can get practically without being in Lebanon. In fact, that hill in the distance, it's a little less than six miles away. The top of that hill, that's essentially the Lebanon border. And we actually just recently heard some artillery, the sounds of artillery. There is active fighting that's been going on over the last you know, week or two on the border. Uh, and it is an increasing concern that when the ground invasion begins in Gaza, Hezbollah, which is the terror organization that is in southern Lebanon, will open up a front, a, a serious front with Israel. And this area will be in active warfare potentially, which brings us to where we are now. This is a helipad I'm standing on. For that hospital, this is the Galilee Medical Center. It's, it's the level one trauma center, if you will, in northern Israel. It serves about 600,000 people. And right now, that whole 700-bed hospital is completely vacant. They have evacuated the whole hospital. And here's what they've done instead. We could show you video that we shot about an hour ago. They let us in the basement. You could see they have converted their basement into a fully functioning hospital with an ER and operating rooms and an internal medicine department. All of the things you would expect in a fully functioning, normal trauma center. They are active and operational and, by the way, ready for war. They are ready for additional patients to have to come in, ready for soldiers who might get hurt in the fight. As it is, they've already seen about 200 patients, people injured in the conflict on the northern border already. I mean, we practice emergency preparedness all the time. We are always working on um, our procedures, our protocols, and our, our systems to understand what we have to do in the time of crisis, to turn a hospital from its everyday care in times of peace, which is what we hope will always be, into a situation where we have to apply critical care in a crisis scenario. We hope for the best as always, but we have to prepare for the worst. We know that Hezbollah is waiting around the, the, the other side of this ridge and hoping to start uh, um, a war action against Israel. So we have to prepare for this scenario and to be prepared for our community, for our patients, but also, God forbid, for our soldiers. And back live, uh, that left upper left corner of this building was actually hit by a missile from Hezbollah back in 2006 uh, in a previous conflict. They had done this then, though. It hit the ophthalmology department, destroyed four patient rooms. No one was hurt because all the patients then were in the basement. This is something that they have been prepared for for, for decades because this part of the world is sort of under perpetual conflict. It's just that in this current conflict that obviously the stakes seem so much higher. We can show you new video and, and images that we received overnight, by the way, from the Israel Defense Force showing uh, new strikes in Gaza overnight. Uh, this was what the Israel Defense Force describes as a terror target in Gaza. But of course, uh, these, uh, these targets are interlaced with civilians, and there have been civilian casualties, many of them children. There's a lot of international pressure on Israel to dial back its, its, uh, its, uh, its efforts, at least until people are able to evacuate, more humanitarian aid is able to get in. And also, by the way, there are more than 200 hostages, now more than 220 hostages officially known to be in captivity in Gaza. There's a, a large and growing and very vocal protest movement within the state of Israel. Family members and their supporters 
urging Israel to hold off on an invasion of Gaza until they're able to bring those hostages home. Two American hostages were released a few days ago. Since then, nothing. Uh, and there is a serious concern about the state of those, of those hostages, about where they are, their safety, if they would survive should a ground invasion begin. Coming back live, we're here on the helipad of the Galilee Regional Medical Center. Uh, Lebanon just right over there, right over that mountain, and they say they are ready uh, for the inevitable moment when things get pretty rough around here. Charlene and Mike, we'll send it back to you, New York. Josh, just one question before we let you go. You, you toured that underground sure. hospital. You said that there's hundreds of patients there right now, and as we see, these tensions grow by the minute, and this could get a lot worse. Are they ready? for the influx? Are they concerned about the influx of patients that may have to be taken care of there? I think there's a concern about that, Shirlene. One of the things they've done is they've gone from 700 beds in the main hospital to 400-ish in the in the in the basement. They've offloaded a lot of a lot of patients to other facilities in central Israel. They've canceled elective procedures. I mean, this is a thing we've, you know, we talked about during COVID and we talked about during various states of emergency in New York. That's a fairly standard thing. Um, so if, it's sort of like that. They say they're ready and they're prepared. Uh, they, believe it or not, can drive an ambulance down into that area. The, the, the walkways are wide enough uh, for that to happen so that in the event that people are coming in by ambulance from the front, they don't have to take them out, you know, at a conventional sally port. They could just drive down into the basement. Uh, so they've, they're, they're pretty sophisticated. They, the doctor there said this is the safest hospital in the world, and wow. hopefully it yeah. is. Josh, I think you make such an interesting point. You talked about elective surgeries. For people who are not familiar with living in a war zone, which unfortunately Israel is, life kind of is going on there, right? To some degree, and everybody, it's tense, but I think a lot of people don't understand that the whole country isn't representative of all the war images that we're seeing necessarily. Oh, 100%, Mike. In fact, most of the country right now has been immune from rocket attacks, right? You know, like you, you have, you have obviously what happened on October 7th, but the Iron Dome defense system has been working. There have been rocket sirens while we've been here. We've had to take cover a few times, but there were all clears because the, the system works and Israelis do trust the system, even though the system so obviously failed from an intelligence perspective on October 7th. But there is just a trust they have for the institutions that protect them, and people are going about their day, which is not to say, I mean, it's quiet for Israel. People are home, they're working from home, kids' schools closed, and it's like COVID, they're, they're studying from home. Yeah. So there's a lot less traffic in general, but, but people are, you know, they're living. Yeah, well, Josh, thank you. Uh, thank you and photojournalist Mike Thorne for bringing us right there. It's so interesting what's yeah. going on there, and you guys thank are doing a great both. job. Stay safe. We'll check back in throughout the day here on Eyewitness News. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, man. Uh